All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started now. Thank you everybody who is joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, Kubernetes Ingress, Simplify Cluster Management Across Any Platform or Environment. I'm Caitlin Barnard, Marketing Manager at Kong, and I'll be helping to moderate today's webinar. I'd also like to welcome our presenter today, Harry Bagdi, who's a Senior Cloud Engineer at Kong. So just to cover a few housekeeping items before we get started, during the webinar, you're not able to speak as an attendee, so there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. As we go through the webinar, please feel free to drop any questions that you have in there, and then we'll get to as many as we can at the end. The webinar is also being recorded and will be available online later along with the slides. So with that, I'll hand it over to Harry to kick off today's presentation. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar on simplifying ingress uh, using Kubernetes, uh, using Kong. So we are going to focus on Kubernetes ingress uh, and how Kong can help you do an accomplished ingress uh, across uh, Kubernetes cluster, but also across other clusters if you wish to. So a little about uh, today's agenda. Uh, we're just going to go a brief overview of what ingress is uh, for those people who are not familiar with, with the terminology and how, how you want to, uh, how, how, why it came into existence and what can it allow you to do. Uh, we'll go a little bit uh, into Kong, like how Kong came into existence, what Kong can do for you and how Kong can do ingress and a little bit more than ingress actually. And then we'll just dive into uh, a demo session where, you know, which, which I think is a pretty comprehensive demo, which allows you to figure out not only just ingress, but uh, a lot of, you know, authentication and other stuffs that you can do at the ingress layer in Kubernetes. All right. So a little bit about myself, uh, as Caitlin said, I'm, I'm an engineer at Kong. Uh, I am an open source enthusiast. I maintain a couple of open source projects uh, along with Kong. Um, uh, I come from a QMU KVM virtualization background. Uh, for those people who are not familiar with that term, uh, that's what powers our cloud computing environment. So if all the VMs that you see running in any of your cloud providers underneath it, uh, you have the Linux KVM layer. And so I have moved up the stack and now uh, a champ, I'm kind of championing Kubernetes at Kong and outside as well. Uh, so with that, uh, Kubernetes ingress. Uh, so uh, you, you all must be familiar with, you know, you can install services into Kubernetes, you can get them running, be it your stateful pods uh, or be it your you know, stateless services. Uh, you can get your pods running, you have your you know, persistence volume claims. Uh, but once you have everything in there, uh, how do you see, how do you actually give people outside the, uh, people access to your services? You know, uh, how do you give services which are not running in Kubernetes and running outside? Uh, how do you get access to those services? And that's where Kubernetes comes into picture. Uh, sorry, that's where Ingress comes, in, comes into play. Ingress is not something new. Uh, even like 20 years ago, we had this concept of, you know, DMZ, like demilitarized zone subnets, uh, where you would run your, you know, the first firewall or the, the proxy. And uh, and that's where, you know, all the traffic that you get into your network comes from there. And that gets propagated out into the entire cluster. Uh, and, you know, that's get forwarded to whatever services you are running. Uh, so why, why why should you do that? Uh, I don't think that needs a lot of convincing, but we'll still go around and see like, you know, one port of entry is something that, you know, it, all your ops guys will love, you know, if you want to firewall some traffic or, you know, if you're being DDoSed or if you're being any kind of security measures that you would like to take, you would like to take that at that first layer. Uh, any kind of audits you would like to do, you would like to do at that one single point. Uh, well, you could ask, uh, well, Harry, you can go and create a service of type load balancer and that's it. Like uh, if you're running in a cloud provider environment, uh, I'll get a load balancer and I can uh, send my traffic through that API or web service or whatever I'm running and that solves my problem. So why not do that? And why do this entire ingress management? Uh, so th the reason being, uh, like you said, you know, one point of entry and also a lot of traffic management and connection management. Uh, you'd want to terminate TCP as early as possible to, to, to speed up a little bit, whatever it may be uh, to reduce the overhead of the three way handshake, same with TLS termination. You might want to encrypt traffic differently in, internally inside your cluster so that you know you have some more visibility into traffic when you're debugging or if you're solving a production issue. Uh, 
and that's where you know uh, things like service mesh also come in uh, you also want to do you know, load balancing at that layer so if you if you are load balancing across zones uh, into avoid failures when you know one of your az's go down uh, you would want to do that at that that layer uh, you'd also want to do you know canary deployments then you can probably do it the ingress of the dmz layer itself you could also move it further into the stack depending on how your uh, operations looks like uh, but you usually people can do a lot more at the ingress layer that's what i'm here to champion so ingress spec has been around since about 2015 so it's about uh, the first commit was in 2015 so it's been around for four years uh, but it still has been in v1 beta 1 uh, what the spec allows you to do is it define it lets you define uh, routing principles right like routing policies for your cluster so any traffic that comes to your kubernetes cluster uh, gets uh, goes through that ingress layer uh, and and then uh, the traffic or uh, any request uh, matches against a specific ingress rule and that gets sent or forwarded to your service that is running inside your cluster uh, it's pretty vendor neutral so you know we are using any kind of proxy it does not really matter uh, you can swap out proxies easily and that's what that's that's the main uh, reason like ingress is getting so popular is it's pretty much vendor neutral um, uh, it it has been stagnant for a for a pretty for a long time, and now the community has again picked up. Uh, it has it's now going through a transition, and it's going to to a v1 API uh, very soon now. Uh, I think in Kubernetes 1.17. Uh, so let's look at the spec here, right? Like so, it this is uh, this is a pretty standard Kubernetes uh, uh, manifest, uh, and um, on the on the left you can see that. This was uh, this is currently like until Kubernetes 1.15. This was under the ext extensions dot v1 beta 1 API group. The extensions uh, API group has been deprecated and is we are trying to remove that from Kubernetes. So ingress was is being put into ingress uh, into the networking uh, API group uh, and is uh, is being GA'd soon with some some fixes to it. Uh, we also want to expand it a lot more uh, since it, it's 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 a fairly narrow spec and API. So let's let's look at uh, the ingress spec here. So pretty standard Kubernetes spec. Uh, we have the name, uh, let's say finance APIs, and then we have a rule here uh, with a couple of paths here. So what the rule says is um, any any request that comes with example.com as the host, the the uh, the host name in the in an HTTP request, uh, we'll forward it to two services based on the path that matches. Uh, so if the if the if the request path starts with slash builds, uh, we'll forward it to the builds service that we are running, right? And this uh, build service would be located in the same name namespace as the ingress rule. So here we are not defining a namespace, so this would go into the default namespace. Uh, you can create ingress rules in any namespace uh, you wish, uh, but it should be in the same namespace as your service. Uh, we want to keep that namespace soft isolation uh, inside Kubernetes. Uh, and then we have the slash orders uh, path. And uh, slash orders gets forwarded to the orders uh, service that is running inside Kubernetes, and uh, that gets forwarded into uh, onto the HTTPS port four four three. So this is uh, this is not the complete spec, but uh, it's it's a pretty small example which shows uh, the power of it. Like you know, you can specify, you can you can decouple the service that you are running and how the traffic actually needs to get there. And folks uh, who are familiar with, you know, HA proxy or Nginx or Apache uh, could probably start thinking about it. Okay, how would I write my, you know, server blocks or location blocks and how would I go about handling these? So that's all like it, 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 the main focus here is being vendor neutral. Now, an important po point here to be noted is uh, this ingress resource ships with Kubernetes, but Kubernetes, if you create this ingress resource, let's say you're running Minikube, uh, nothing would actually happen. Uh, yeah. the, these ingress resources uh, let you define routing policies, but then uh, you need to install a controller which actually uh, reads these policies and implements them. You know, uh, so so these policies are read by you know you can you, the, uh, there are popular in, uh, ingress controllers out there, Kong being one of them. Uh, they can they can read these policies and configure themselves to to route traffic accordingly. Uh, so that's where it comes in, where uh, you have this ingress API inside Kubernetes, but 
it won't ship with uh, an ingress uh, controller if you're running gke eks or any of the managed offering they do come with you know some some basic ingress controllers uh, so that's that's another option that you have so this is where it comes in okay we have this ingress now how do we go about and actually start using it because if we just create this ingress resource nothing is going to happen so, so that's where kong comes in and the, kong is one of the popular ingress controllers that we that are out there uh, and so i'm going to go a little bit into like how what kong is and why you should be using that for ingress so kong is a uh, currently very popular cloud native api gateway uh, although it's not an api gateway anymore it's it's going more towards you know like how you can orchestrate microservices how you can you know do even do service mesh with kong uh, it was initially open sourced in 2015 by a company called mishape uh, and then uh, it was it's it's an apache 2 so you know fairly liberal license thing uh, 1.0 was announced last year uh, it's been running in production for about about four years, so like about three years now. And last year, the 1.0 launch uh, announced feature completeness of the product. Uh, the most important point here to note uh, that I would like to emphasize is platform agnosticity. So this, this presentation is focusing on a Kubernetes uh, focus of Kong. Uh, but we, but anything that we do develop in our core product is never Kubernetes specific. Uh, most of our customers run in a in a hybrid environment. You know, any enterprises that we run, you know, we are seeing a lot of Kubernetes adoption. But then, you know, you have bare metal data centers still around. You have OpenStack still around. You know, so no, it's not that everybody is just moved to you know public cloud or everybody is just implementing Kubernetes solutions in their shops. People still use other orchestration orchestration solutions. And Kong works across them. So Kong can be deployed in, in all of these environment and Kong can work with you know, service discovery mechanisms of all these environment. So that's where we want to be very, very Kubernetes friendly and like Kubernetes integrations are extremely important to us, but that's not the only platform that uh, we would like to focus our efforts on. Yeah, so going into a little bit of uh, details of you know uh, what actually Kong can do for me is so this is a, a rough uh, overview of what Kong can accomplish here, right? So on the left side, I have the client. Uh, now this client can be anybody, any any user of an API, right? So it can be you, know, you can have like a public API like Twitter or Google, and your clients could be accessing your APIs over the internet and you know coming through that route or your client could also be you know your internal services right? like uh, if you are running a microservices architecture in, inside your organization uh, you can have one service talk to another and that traffic can flow via Kong instead right on the right hand side uh, we have got a few services uh, and these are services of all kind so we see we have a gRPC service uh, we have you know, a REST, a simple JSON over HTTP and, you know, other other kind of REST full services that you could be running. Uh, JSON over HTTP being the most popular one today and gRPC slowing eating that up. And then we have the database traffic, you know, so you could have, you know, you kind know, of Redis protocols flowing through, you could have you know, MySQL, or uh, you could also have something much more like a different L4 protocol, something like, you know, Kafka flowing through as well. So you can flow, like proxy any traffic through Kong and then Kong can do uh, a certain magic on top of those requests, right? So as the request flows through Kong, uh, Kong can change the request uh, or Kong can implement certain policies that you want it to do, right? So each of the boxes that I've uh, drawn here are, are sort of plugins in Kong. Kong is an extensible architecture and it's like a plugin based architecture. So you can specify, you know, any request that goes through my builds service, which is JSON over HTTP, uh, load balance it uh, in this particular way. You know, I want to maybe you know do sticky sessions with it, uh, and also I want some Prometheus metrics out of it. While for my gRPC service, I want some Datadog metrics out of it, uh, right? And then maybe for the database traffic that I'm seeing, you know, if I have high latencies, I want to do certain kind of logging for those slow queries, right? And all all that you can you know customize in Kong and and get that done. Uh, uh, a very popular feature being rate limiting, you know, like you don't want people to be hitting your traffic. Uh, so you could do all these in these services as well. Uh, the reason Kong is, exists is we try to dry things out. So rather than asking each and every application team that you have for these 
uh, features, uh, you can just run Kong in front of them and the, the services are, you know, core business logic of that service is only inside the service. You're not implementing rate limiting in you know, 20 different ways, you know, and be, so that also gives you a lot of homogeneous, uh, you know, nature of your, like if you're, if an external developer is reading something, they naturally know, okay, this is how uh, your API works. So Kong is built on top of uh, a very solid stack uh, is what I would like to say. So underneath uh, it's Nginx. Uh, Nginx needs no introduction to this audience, I hope. Uh, it's been around for about a decade now. Oh, actually more than a decade. It's, it, it powers a huge part of internet. Uh, on top of Nginx uh, is, uh, 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 it's kind of less popular than Nginx, but uh, it's, called, it's called OpenResty, uh, which ex extends Nginx with Lua and Lua JIT. And uh, so Lua and Lua JIT are like, you know, Lua is a very popular scripting languages that was an initially used only, I think in, like it's, it's more power, powerful in the gaming community and, you know, more embedded systems. Uh, but it with Lua JIT, uh, you can get like, you know, near C, C lip, near like hardware performance where, you know, it, it compiles down to a very fast byte code. And so, so that's another open source uh, product that originally came out of uh, Cloudflare. Uh, so Cloudflare stack is entirely in you know C and Lua, and that's being Nginx and Lua, uh, and that's where it was born. And now it's it's being maintained and has a thriving community around it. Uh, and by the way, this is OpenResty is what actually powers Ingress Nginx, uh, which was the first in Nginx, which was the first Ingress controller that Kubernetes community developed. So uh, OpenResty is a sort of subset of Nginx. So if you have any Nginx configuration, you can also provide that to OpenResty and it will work out of the box. Um, it has more uh, features and you know uh, inside embedded inside, which 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 make it pretty much dynamic. Uh, and then Kong is built on top of OpenResty, uh, which when where we make it you know a really API driven and cloud native. Cloud native being we 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 wanted to not have you know like you don't have to restart any processes you know your configurations change very often you know as your kubernetes services scale we want kong to automatically handle traffic across those balance load balance across those and uh, and it's completely api driven so you can script it to do a lot of things you know that are specific to your infrastructure but we also ship with things uh, uh, which are you know like standardized, you know, some, something like rate limiting, if anybody wants to use it, we, we, we ship with a standard plugin, but then you can change it, extend it as in ways you would like to want to do it. So how do we do ingress with Kong? Uh, we have a Kong ingress controller uh, that makes Kong super, super nice and friendly with the uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so this is a very fairly simple architecture, as you can see. Uh, you have the API server on the left here, and in the middle you have uh, Kong pods, uh, which run two containers. Uh, one container is Kong, which is the runtime, which is the proxy that we use. And we have a co-located controller, which uh, talks to Kubernetes API server, you know, handles RBAC and everything, reads the, reads the ingress resources that we created and configures Kong accordingly. And then that, that gets proxied to your services, you know, and then Kong can execute authentication and whatnot on these things. Um, so as, as I was saying, uh, the, the ingress spec is fairly narrow. As you could see, it's, it's currently HTTP only. Uh, you can route based on, you know, host uh, header. You can route based on, you know, the paths you have. Uh, you can put in some TLS settings as well, but Kong, Kong can do a lot more than that. And we want you to do that. We want you to use Kong for all those things. Excuse me. So, we, we have a concept of plugins. So we, we have a few different CRDs and we'll get this more into these into the demo. Uh, what these allow you to do is, you know, extend the Ingress API uh, using, you know, annotations and CRDs to, to do more things and extend the regular Ingress. Uh, these are Kong specific things as well. So that's why uh, some of these can be in incorporated into the Ingress API. And that's something that we are trying to work with the community. But some of these will always be, you know, outside the Ingress API. So let's let's get into the demo. Uh, and I should stop talking because that's what people here are for. So let's see. Can you guys see my screen? Caitlin, can you see my screen? Yep, looks good. Looks good, awesome, okay. Let's see, so I'm running a, a GKE cluster right now, um, just for the 
ease uh, of the demo and whatever i do is actually going to be accessible on the internet so i hope nobody on this webinar actually ddoses me all right so uh, i'm going to follow let's see a script so we have uh, the ingress controller uh, that we are it's a simple yaml that we are going to install right now so kong ingress dbls is is the yaml that we are installing oops okay let's see okay that's better so we are installing everything in a specific namespace called kong and we are we installed the custom resource definitions that uh, i just uh, showed you in the slide and we have some rbac related resources and a service account uh, which which gives kong the permission to talk to uh, the a a api server and then we have a deployment and a config map to configure kong all right let's see so we can do this so we have got the ingress controller up and running as you can see we have got two pods and both are ready to run we should also have a service uh, so we have the kong proxy service uh, which is of type load balancer right so you would only have ideally you would only have kong one load balancer service that is kong and everything would flow through this right so you don't have to pay for 15 load balancers if you are running 15 services inside kubernetes <clears throat> so let's see all what we have installed so everything so that includes a pod that includes a service deployment and replica set replica set belongs to this deployment right and replica set is what is powering our pod here we are running only one pod right now uh, obviously don't do this in production uh, run multiple uh, instances for some redundancy to provide some protection or against uh, failure of you know a, a specific node let's see if google uh, got us a load balancer for kong all right so we got an external ip here this should be routable on the internet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and set this into an environment variable since i'm going to use that throughout the demo so we have <coughs> this up now uh, i'm going to send a simple request to this endpoint and you'll see here that you know kong responded with a message saying no routes no route matched with those values uh, this is because we have not created any ingress rules currently so if we do this no resource is found so kong does not know how to proxy any request how to send how to forward it inside your kubernetes cluster so and and you can see we are running like the response is indeed coming from kong so so that that gives you the hint so what we are going to do next is going to install two services these are very simple fairly demo services uh, what we have got here is http bin uh, which is the same http bin.org service you know which echoes request content and you can configure it to do a few different like based on the request it will send back a different response and then we have got an echo service which responds back with some pod details and uh, request and response details all right so let's see so kubectl get pods will show okay i'm running four instances of the echo service uh, I've got HTTP bin. External DNS is something that I'm using currently to, to manage DNS of my Kubernetes cluster. You can ignore that for this demo. So let's go ahead and create an ingress rule here, right? So what we just did here, okay, the kind is ingress. Uh, if you see the API version is extensions because this is a given older Kubernetes cluster. And we have got a couple of rules here. The first rule says there is no, actually let's do kubectl get ingress demo. Okay, let's describe it. So, okay, so that gives you a nice, pretty printed form uh, where the first rule is we do, we haven't set any host header, so that means any any request that comes that starts with slash foo gets forwarded to the echo service that we created, and anything that comes to http bin dot yulu forty two dot com uh, gets forwarded to http bin, right? And uh, so let's let's test this out right so we set the proxy ip so i'm going to send a request to slash again slash f nothing happens because there is no request there, there's nothing that gets forwarded and then if you do slash foo you can see that you know you have got some information here so we'll look at some so the headers first so you can see we have got uh, the actual server which responded with to our request was echo server 
And the request was proxied via Kong. So Kong actually matched this rule against our ingress rule that we created and forwarded it upstream. And then we have, you know, which echo pod actually responded since we have four Kong will load balance by default, it will do a round robin load balancing, but you could configure it to do you know, sticky sessions or hash based based on you know source IP or some, or maybe cookie based as well, if you want it. And then we have some request information. So if we do something like, let's say expost, uh, we'll see that the method is now post, right? And if we slash foo demo cncf, we'll see the real path is slash demo cncf. Okay, so that's like basic ingress that's working here right now, right? Let's see. So I'm uh, going to see if we can do this. So I'm running. I'm running some automation here to populate Cloudflare DNS uh, with with the I cluster IP that we just got. And okay, so we can see that uh, DNS propagation has happened successfully. So uh, we had this rule of HTTP bin dot yolo 42com goes to the HTTP bin service. So if you are familiar with HTTP bin, you can do slash status 200, it will return back a 200 okay. And you can see, you know, uh, the request is being forwarded by Kong. Uh, let's ask for the headers. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it will send back the headers that we are sending, right? So foo bar, and we'll see that the request actually forgets, goes through Kong. And these are all the request headers that are coming through, right? Uh, so that you don't see Kong here because uh, these are all the request header. Well, we'll see Kong in the response header. So this is all pretty, uh, pretty, pretty basic, right? You you only have, you've got ingress, you created ingress rule, you can proxy services. Uh, now we are going to get into Kong specific parts here, right? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a Kong plugin resources. Mm -hmm. So let's go through this. So what we are saying here is uh, uh, we are giving it a, any name and then we have a config of the plugin. So we are saying that for uh, whenever this plugin gets executed, add a request, add a header and add the header demo or colon injected by Kong, right? And the plugin that we are using right now is response transformer because we want to transform responses. We do not want to transfer requests. We can also use request transformer and you know before Kong sends that request to your service, uh, Kong will inject this header. While right now, when the response comes back to your service to Kong, before sending the response back to the client, Kong will inject this header. Okay, so let's, the, we created that resource. Now let's execute this plugin. Uh, hold on. So now let's execute a request and see the, so I'm just outputting the headers because we are not dealing with, we don't care about the body for this part. We don't see that request, uh, the request actually has that header. The reason being we created this plugin, but we didn't configure Kong uh, uh, to when to actually run this plugin. Like when do we, do we want to execute this plugin on every request or for some requests? So for that, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and annotate our ingress rule. So what we are going to do is we are going to add an annotation uh, saying that whenever a request is executed and it matches one of these ingress rules that we created for HTTP bin and our echo service, execute this plugin as well, right? You can, and you can specify some other plugin as well here. So it's, it's you can run as many plugins as you would want. And then we edit that. Now, we go ahead and execute this request and we see that the demo header is actually injected by Kong. And uh, if we call, let's say HTTP bin, because that is inside the same ingress rule, uh, you can see that it still is injected by Kong, right? So so that that's how you, this is the basic version where you know can you can inject header. You can also remove a header or you can replace a header with uh, the content of some other request or you can append to a header. And now you can have, so you can do a lot of those things, but I hope this, this, this gets the message that, you know, like, okay, you can do transformations on requests and responses as well. Next, uh, I'll, I'll go through uh, an authentication plugin. So we have got HTTP bin and uh, if you're opening HTTP bin right now in your browsers, you'll see that you know, anybody can access it. Um, now I've only got one pod of it running. So even if enough of you are actually hitting that, you'll probably DDoS me. And I don't want to want that to happen, right? So what we'll do is we will uh, enable a plugin. 
So this is another like you can have external auth plugin or you can have you know plugins that Kong do does the authentication for you. So here we have the key auth plugin, right? So every time you make a request, uh, we will uh, ask for an API key. If the API key is not present, then Kong will reject that request. Uh, so we created this plugin, and now we will annotate the service uh, HTTP bin with this plugin. So. You see the last time I annotated an, an ingress resource, while well, this time I'm annotating a service. Uh, the reason being, uh, no matter which ingress rule it, uh, uh, the request comes from, uh, I want the service to be always authenticated, right? So anytime, if we have defined HTTP bin.yolo42.com, but if we also had HTTP.yolo42.com, both request, uh, and these are in separate ingress rules, both will have authentication enabled. So now, uh, I enable that. Now let's send a request to HTTP bin. Um, and you see no API key found in request. Uh, the response comes from Kong and it says 401 unauthorized. So now uh, nobody can actually access the service. Uh, so if we want to get access, what the way we do it, and you can also use OIDC or LDAP auth if you want, you know, if you want to authenticate against an identity provider that you're running or Okta, all that is also possible. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to use two other custom resource definitions that we have. Uh, so I'm going to create a user named Harry and I'm going to associate uh, a credential with that user. So I just created a consumer Harry and this is a Kong specific uh, implementation. Uh, and then I associate that consumer Harry with an API key, right? So the type of the uh, credential is key auth and the key here being super secret. So this is an API key, you know, if you're using any public APIs, uh, they usually have OAuth or API key based uh, authentication enabled. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the request uh, using this API key. So you can see, you know, we got the response back here. So, so it responded back. We get the headers back here. So let's fumble with the API key. And we'll see that invalid authentication credential. So Kong is doing the authentication for us. Uh, we are, we did not actually edit HTTP bin at all. We have not touched it, HTTP bin at all. Now, uh you have now let's let's do another popular plugin which is called uh, rate limiting right rate limiting is an extremely popular use case for kong and here uh, we are doing something a little different so what here we are doing here is we are adding a label called global and we are setting that to true what this means is this this plugin will always execute no matter where the request comes from right so even if you, like any any ingress rule it comes from or uh, it will be matched and we'll allow five requests per minute and uh, we'll have a policy of local. Policy is something that you can dig, dig deeper. You can have Redis to have, you know, uh, Redis based rate limiting and those things. So those are more Im like implementation details. So we do this uh, and let's try to send a request. No API key found obviously. Uh, so we, how do we add a header? Super secret key. Oops, there we go. So now uh, we sent a request to HTTP bin and we can see Kong injected a rate limit header, right? So you have also the other plugin that we had enabled before is executing, authentication is also going on and Kong is also doing rate limiting now. So, right, so we are allowing five requests per minute and we can make four more requests, to, right? And if we execute this thing, so let's do even this one. So, so if we send a request to the other service, we'll see that you still get rate limited, right? So, so no matter which service you are accessing, you are being rate limited. Now here the rate limit was four again, because the minute rolled around. So it's a minute based rate limiting. So that's why it rolled around. Now, if you keep on executing this request a few times, you can make one more request. You cannot make any request. And now you get a four, too many requests of 429, right? So you're being denied uh, access to the service if you make more than five requests. So you can configure this again to be hourly or per second or whatever rate you have. And then, you know, 
maybe you want authentication enabled for rate limits, maybe not. So all that's also configurable as well. Uh, so, so that gives you, uh, you know, a rate limiting. We have got authentication enabled as well. So we have already secured our service, you know, so we are only writing our API and Kong is doing the rest for us. And this can be done, you know, obviously across multiple services, uh, or multiple namespaces and whatnot. Uh, next, what we are going to do is uh, I'll show off another plugin, which is also pretty popular. Uh, we recently open sourced this one is the proxy cache. So it's uh, basically response caching. Uh, and we will also enable this at the global level, right? So by global level, you don't need to associate with a specific ingress or a specific service. Kong will execute that for every request that flows through it, right? And if you want to enable it on for a specific ingress rule, you can do that as well. So, so it's pretty flexible uh, based on, you know, each team's requirement, you can configure them and have them configure it or maybe your ops people can do it. So let's go ahead and uh, now try to access our Endpoint. Now we have got a few things going on here. So we have the rate limit, obviously, that's going on. Uh, we also have got X cache key and X by bypass key, uh, cache status. So here we see the cache status is bypass. Um, the reason being, by default, Kong will not uh, cache HTML that's coming from the backend. By default, we I think only do application JSON. Uh, that's also configurable, obviously. Like, what what kind of content types do you want to cache? So let's do let's do headers. So if we do headers, we get back the headers, but we see that the cache status is miss here because we, it was the first request that we executed. And we are caching things in memory, right? We can also cache things in Redis, and you know if you have multiple traffic, multiple services going through, you can uh, cache based on selectively as well. So we see the cache is hit. I think if I add another header here, yeah, so you see, uh, so in the last request, what, what we did, uh, we got a cache hit, right? And then the next request that I sent, I actually changed the header, right? I added a foobar header, but that didn't appear in this response. So if you enable caching blindly, this is a wrong response, right? The service is said is a response is being cached, which should not be cached. So this is how, I mean, if, there are endpoints that you would like to cache, you know, which are sending back metadata so that Kong resorts to the cached info when your service is not available, you can do those magics easily. Yeah, so that's what we are doing. We are caching, we are rate limiting, we are we have you know authentication enabled here. So that's that's all that I have for demo right now. Let's see. Uh, there are a lot of other features uh, that exist and those are specific to uh, Kubernetes as well. So we, we integrate heavily with uh, you know, Prometheus, we integrate with open tracing as well. So you can use those to you know get metrics. You know, every request this that flows into your cluster, you you have a Kubernetes dashboard and you don't have to instrument your services. You know, you don't have to implement Prometheus metrics for in each and every service that you need. You can just get that out of Kong for you. Right. And obviously we'll have like more black box metrics, meaning you know, we'll have so like you know, request latencies, uh, bandwidth. Uh, being consumed, uh, error rates, you know, based on HTTP requests or, you know, maybe TCP timeouts, or if you have gRPC, uh, then you have like gRPC error rates. Uh, so Kong can do all that. Uh, we also integrate heavily with, you know, sort manager and external DNS. I'm using external DNS right now. So if you create any DNS entry, if I create any ingress resource, it actually automatically populates my DNS server. And then, you know, as you could see, I, I created that HTTP bin rule and it automatically created uh, you know, a, an A record for it. We also do a lot of, you know, route by header and HTTP method. If you want like, you know, more fine grained routing, uh, we do not, we introduce something called Kong ingress, which allows you to, you know, tweak load balancing configurations, uh, other, you know, uh, you know, health checking and circuit breakers are also possible. So that all can be done at Kong layer, Kong itself. And, we have a very strong roadmap. So Kong currently actually can proxy gRPC. It can proxy, you know, TCP TLS issue, uh, uh, as well. So if you have like a custom protocol and you just want to, you know, do TLS terminations at Kong, Kong can do that for you. If you have a custom protocol, you can do protocol parsing at Kong. You can do that. Uh, gRPC routing is uh, just recently landed with 1.3, so you can, you know. Uh, 
expose your gRPC service via Kong and Kong will do the routing for you. You can do transformation logging. Again, again, the whole set of plugins are available for gRPC as well. Uh, we're coming up with a, a, a new release next month and that's where we are getting compatible with Istio as well. So you can do, you know, mutual authentication with Istio internally in your cluster and Kong can be the ingress point. So Kong will be responsible for north-south traffic, any traffic that is incoming into your cluster any traffic that is flowing inside your cluster uh, that can be handled by a service mesh, which can be Istio or Linkerd and Kong service mesh as well. Uh, upstream TLS is something coming up uh, as well, uh, which will allow you to pro you know, encrypt traffic and you know have mutual authentication between Kong and the service you're running inside Kubernetes, uh, which is a requirement by some of our users. And we have a few other you know, admission webhooks and making it all the more easier to use. So that's that's the roadmap that we have for this year. And that's it, that's all that I have for this presentation. Uh, installation is pretty simple, uh, it's open source. Uh, feel free to try it out. Uh, uh, we've been getting a lot of feedback from the community and adoption, so very happy with that. Uh, but if you would like, just go to the GitHub repositories. Uh, there's a whole slew of docs. Uh, this week we have published a lot of guides on how to do these things that I showed you in the demo. So certainly do check that out. And that's it. That's all that I have. We mm, thank you. Maybe with that, uh, maybe we can open the floor for questions or yeah, up to you. Back to you, Caitlin. Yeah, we have a lot of questions coming in. So thank you, Harry, for the great presentation. Um, if you have questions, please drop them in the Q and A tab at the bottom of your screen. I will say that we do have a lot coming in. So if we don't get to them in the next fifteen minutes. Um, we do have a Kong Slack channel on the Kubernetes Slack, so please join us there if you want to dive deeper into any of this. Um, I also will just say that we have a few events coming up later this year. So we have Kong Summit coming up October 2nd and 3rd in San Francisco. We have both some great Kong-specific workshop sessions as well as more um, sessions around cloud native technologies in the community. So there is a code here that we're offering if you're interested in joining us. Uh, if we go to the next one, Harry. Yep, uh, there we go. We will also be um, at KubeCon and Cloud Native Con in San Diego. This will be the largest KubeCon to date. So we'll have a day zero event there where we'll cover this as well as more service mesh content. Um, so the link to our colo isn't up yet, but I will add that to the slides once it is. Um, and then we'll also have a booth there. So stop by and say hi. Um, so let's get into these questions. So going back to the demo, I want to, I'm going to start here just to make sure we've clarified any points. Um, so was there any Kong controller running in master node or how does it accept the YAML request? Yeah, that's a good question. So we do not have a controller actually running inside uh, the master node. What happens is uh, uh, kubectl get pod Kong, uh, Kong. What we have is we have two pods running here. So, and we 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 have a controller running inside one of, in the, uh, we have one pod running with two containers and one of the containers is a controller. So we do not need anything to, in the master at all. And the controller will talk to the master node, the API server and get those ingress YAMLs. Those YAMLs are stored inside HCD, that's Kubernetes object store. So you don't need to configure anything special inside your Kubernetes uh, control plane at all. Everything just works uh, if you have, by just installing this, you don't need any 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 configuration at you know cubes, cubelets, or Kong, uh, cube ADM, or anything like that. Awesome. And then in the Ingress demo, you didn't annotate the Ingress with Ingress class Kong. How is that possible? You didn't in annotate with Ingress dot. Yeah, Ingress dot class. Yeah, so by default, uh, if you don't annotate an ingress class, uh, then any ingress controller will accept that that ingress and you know configure it. Uh, if you have, let's say, you know, if you have GCE like GCP ingress running and you have Kong running and you have another controller running, then if you annotate it with Kong, only then that would be accepted. So by default, if there is no annotation present, uh, we will accept that rule. But if you want to you know, segregate those ingress rules for different controllers, you can specify those classes. Or maybe you can run multiple Kong ingress controllers as well. One for internal traffic, one for external traffic, or you know, for different business units if that's your use case. And then annotate those classes and then you can segregate that. So that's a good question. Yeah. 
And then if there's only one load balancer, how do you avoid a single point of failure? Aha, uh -huh, that's okay. Yeah, so uh, the load balancer that we are using here uh, in, 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 in case of, we are using GKE. So if you see, we have only one IP address, right? So if we go back to the demo, get service, uh, we see that we, there is only one IP address. Uh, what is happening under the hood is Google is provisioning a global load balancer, uh, which uses Anycast. So even though there is only one external IP address, uh, this is actually being handled by a, an array of machines, right? So Google, uh, so this is a managed uh, load balancer by Google. So, and it comes with a promise of, you know, if a single machine goes down, it won't fail. So that's why it's not a single point of failure. And same with Kong, uh, you should probably run multiple instances of Kong pods. So, and these pods are stateless. So if, even if one of those dies, uh, you don't have a failure. So in, if, if you're running in this inside, let's say uh, Amazon's EKS, I think they call it EKS, yeah. Uh, Amazon's load balancer are usually are provisioned with two IP addresses, right? So that's uh, for a little bit of failover. Uh, uh, so you can, uh, and those IP addresses change and you get instead a C name. So in that case, uh, you have two of those. So it, it, it really depends on specific Im implementations uh, of, you know, load balancer service. Uh, so any load balancer service has a different implementation based on the cloud provider that you are using, or if you're in bare metal, you might not actually have those. So. Yeah, I hope that answers that question. So. Awesome. And then, is there a soft limit respect to how many ingress resources a Kong controller could manage? That's a very good question. Uh, I've tested it with about 500 resources, uh, and this was for a test, uh, like a, a test inside, you know, one of the libraries that we're using that we are doing pagination and those things correctly. Uh, if you're using a lot, lot of ingress resources, that's not a problem. Uh, I think Kong ingress controller will easily be able to handle those. Um, if you're using, uh, it's not recommended that you use a lot of consumers uh, and credentials, but ingress resources creating a lot of those and a lot of plugins should not be a problem. Uh, if you go like, let's say beyond thousand ingress resources, uh, you'll, you'll have to tweak certain Kong settings. So you'll have to give it a little bit of memory. And this is, really depending on you know your traffic patterns so you tweak them as you go but by default i think it, it it's there's no hard limit that we have imposed or that we have run into yet so uh, maybe if you find one please do report back thank you awesome and then how does Kong work if there is more than one ingress controller installed in kubernetes for example nginx and kong um, in the same kubernetes yeah, so that ties back against uh, into the same ingress.class annotation uh, uh, discussion, right? So what you can do is you can annotate the certain ingress rules uh, uh, will be annotated with the ingress class of Nginx, and then certain can be annotated with ingress class of Kong, right? And this class itself is also configurable as well. So you'll annotate these and then those, like the ingress rules annotated with that particular ingress type, only those will be satisfied with uh, by Kong, right? So you definitely do not want uh, it to happen that uh, you have two ingress controllers fighting for the same ingress, right? If you, if we see here, kubectl get uh, ingress, we'll see that the address of this is updated with the address of the load balancer, right? So if you have two load, two ingress controllers run, uh, running and they are, they'll constantly keep on over changing your address, and keep on fighting to satisfy those resources, which might result into conflict. So with, with, with ingress or class annotations, which is very widely adopted, uh, that's how you would handle multiple ingress controllers of the same kind or different kinds. Um, and then we do have a request if uh, you could maybe switch back to that slide with the links on it. Or... Sure. There you go. So um, we have a lot of questions here about comparison to the Nginx Ingress controller. Why would you recommend over um, the Nginx? Yeah, so uh, I mean, I would really like, obviously I have my bias here, but I would rather ask you to go to the Nginx Ingress controller documentation and then go to Kong's website, right? So both of them are powered by the same underlying stack, right? Nginx on top of OpenResty, and then you have Kong and Nginx has directly OpenResty. So uh, the way a lot of libraries that are used even in, in the Nginx Ingress are shared, right? Uh, both have made, tried to make 
Nginx as dynamic as possible. With Kong, what you get is a, a lot of other uh, enhancements that don't come with out of the box with the Nginx ingress. You have this plugin architecture, so you can do authentication, you can do just caching and these things, and these are all customizable, right? So if if certain plugin doesn't fit to your need, you can always tweak those. Uh, or if you have some, you know, a specific uh, implementation that you want to do inside, you know, Lua, you can write your own custom plugin. We also have serverless plugins, so you can execute blob of you know, Lua code inside Kong. So for every request that goes through your billings API and you want to do some special magic, you, you can uh, write up just a small bit of Lua script, put that inside Kong and Kong will execute that. So that plugin, that plugin based architecture gives you a lot. And then comes with a lot of load balancing and so TLS management, right? So you can do a lot of things like, you know, upstream TLS, downstream TLS, mutual TLS, if that's need, needed. So those things uh, are much, much, much easier for you to run that. Also, Nginx Ingress is something very, very specific to Kubernetes. So if, if you are adopting Kong Ingress Controller and let's say a certain part of your organization doesn't run in Kubernetes, you can still, they can still run Kong and you can have a lot of knowledge share, a lot of transparency. Another advantage, if you were to phase out Kubernetes in future, you can just, uh, there is a small command uh, for dumping the ingress controller configuration. You can just export that and import that in a different environment and things would work. So you wouldn't have to again start from scratch rebuilding that environment. So these are the things which, which make it pretty, pretty extensible, but also very much compatible with other other orchestration platforms that you have and uh, a, a lot of uh, like the community around it the plugin community is huge so that you can take that advantage as well all right um and then is it possible to do rate limiting based on headers like an authorization header so the idea would be to apply rate limiting on user tokens um that will share the same kong consumer yeah yeah so you can so if you i don't know if you saw it or not in the demo we were limiting actually by consumer so you can definitely do that so you know based on authentication based on you know if you have an oidc authentication you can you know have that consumer created automatically in kong if you're doing api key authentication for every consumer you can have a rate limit you can also have a different rate limit for every consumer as well so you know maybe you have certain consumers who are paying you more you give them a higher rate limit and who are paying you less give them a lower limit or you can have a uniform limit across all the consumers as well. Or you can have exceptions, you know, so for every, for HTTP bin service, I have X rate limit file for my billings API, I have Y rate limit. So all that is pretty configurable out of the box. Awesome, and then um, can rate limiting be applied in an origin policy base, for example, by origin IPs or origin geo, geo localized? Uh, I don't think that's possible. I do, okay. So that might be possible with, uh, if you do header-based routing. So, you know, based on the ori origin header, you you change your request or response path or patterns, you can do that. Uh, but this should be something very, very easily possible with a small patch, right? You can easily do that. It's, I'm not too sure if it's possible out of the box, but you might have to write like a small Lua snippet to do that. Um, and then is Kong available as an operator? So the good question. So we are trying to make Kong easier and more and more easier to run. Uh, there is a Kong operator that is more like an alpha stage operator and we're trying to put in some resources into that. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, the, the link there would be Kong slash Kong operator on GitHub. So you can go to github.com slash Kong slash Kong operator. You can check that out. Uh, we have a Helm chart available as well. So that that helps you install that. And we are also uh, planning to roll out customized support as well. Customize is uh, something that is becoming pretty popular as well. So. Um, and then we had a couple questions about DBList. So mm -hmm. is there a plan to go that way in the future? So the current demo that we ran is DBLess actually. So we are running a Kong ingress controller in a DBLess mode. That means Kong is not backed by any database. You can also install Kong with a database, which is the more popular and the more like DBLess came out only a, a, like I think earlier this year. 
uh, with a database also you can manage that so and then you can you can have some custom configuration that you want to put manually inside the database you can do that and rest of the configuration is managed by ingress controller i would recommend you put everything inside kubernetes manifests and that configures the database using the database has some pros and cons uh, and that those are discussed in the in the documentation so i'll ask you to go that side Um, and is there a recommended approach to use authentication plugins and selectively apply them to ingress routes? Um, so for example, having one service that has some unsecured end endpoints and some secured endpoints. Yes, so you can do that. So what you can do that there is you can create one ingress resource, which by which uh, applies, apl which uh, secures all the endpoint. Then you create another and then you know so you annotate that with that authentication plugin now let's say a very trivial example you want don't want slash health to be authenticated then you can create another ingress resource which is more specific right so you would say slash service a requires authentication but then slash service a slash health does not require authentication and then you can make it more granular or more general as well so maybe slash service a slash public does not require authentication at all. And so you can do that as well. That's certainly possible pretty easily. You just have to create another ingress resource. Um, and can you talk a little bit about the difference between Kong and Kong Enterprise Edition? Sure. So yeah, Kong, uh, uh, Kong is the open source product and Enterprise Edition is what we sell uh, uh, to our enterprise customers. Uh, both run on the same runtime. So the runtime is not different at all. Kong Enterprise ships with more enterprise features. So, you know, if you want, you know, a nicer UI to manage Kong, you want, you know, developer portal functionalities, uh, you want, you know, RBAC accesses inside the Kong API as itself, then that's where enterprise comes in. And then we are doing a lot of things around, you know, machine learning and, uh, how how we can help you further manage your APIs better. So since Kong has access to the traffic, it can figure out okay what's going wrong or what has recently changed. So all those are enterprise features. The core routing always go, remains inside the open source version, and the Kong enterprise actually just inherits that and builds on top of it these enterprise features. Uh, which if yeah, that's that's. That's the basic gist. I work a lot on the open source side, so I'm doing a really terrible job of explaining what enterprise is. So, yeah. Yeah, and just to reinforce everything we've covered here is an open source feature. Yes, yes. Um, awesome, okay. Unfortunately, we are at time. I, I know we have more questions that we didn't get to, so we will take this offline and get you all answers to those. If you want to chat in the meantime, again, please join us on Slack, um, the Kubernetes Slack in the Kong channel. Um, and thank you all for the great questions um, and for joining us today. Again, the recording and slides will be online later. And we look forward to seeing you at a future CNCF webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good, good day.